What's up everybody, welcome back to more podiums. Today, I wanna to show you guys how you can make your iRacing experience or your simulator experience as immersive as possible on a single monitor or ultra wide with the use of something you probably have just laying around your house. The answer is, it's just a webcam and some open source software and I think that you guys can make your single or ultra wide just as comparable to the triples that we have over on the side. And the key is, it's all in your head. All right, so as you guys know, we spent some time in some cars recently. We had the 718 Porsche that we took out at Homestead. We have been doing a few, got the opportunity to do a few videos in regards to FOV for a Miata, a GR86. And there's one thing that really stood out while I was in both of them. And I, I, I filmed those videos with a cell phone. You have it and I put it right in front of my face so that you can use it too to understand exactly what it feels like and how you can match your FOV. But there's one thing that's been missing from the equation, and that's the fact that you don't turn with your head whenever you're using a single monitor. And I was doing some research on the internet and I found that we could actually solve that problem. So I'm actually gonna show you guys what it looks like to go around Homestead and turn two, three, four in something that they call the toilet bowl. And I want you to pay attention to just how much my head is turning throughout each one of the turns. Please break, stay to my side. Release, let it roll, gentle gas. Look for orange ahead of your stepdad. Stay to my side. Very gentle brakes here. Release, that orange, turn to your green. Keep your head turning, look for your orange. Gentle gas when you see it. Lift off, touch the brake and release. My green. A Little bit of gas, your green. Nice deep breath, a little bit more. And accelerate all the way to yellow, aiming for orange. Keep braking. A little more. Release. Turn to green. Oh, Look call. for orange. Yeah, a little call. more. Orange again. All right. That was a lot of head movement. <laughs> the the baklava or the fire fire mask there always a fun time. Uh, the extreme experience was a, was a great experience and it was it was something that was really awesome and positive to get that real world experience. I'm very grateful for that. And I want to share with you guys that. If you if you you look where you're going to go, or I'm sorry, no, that's backwards. You go where you're going to look, and that is where you're looking is where you're going. If you're driving down the road and you're going like this and you're taking a left-hand turn and you don't turn your head, I don't want you next to me. I want you looking through the turn. I want you lining up the apexes. And by using a system called AI Track, you're actually able to do that and go from this standard static screen to actually looking through the S's. So let's jump in and see how we got that set up. All right, y'all, take 553, we're back. So go to GitHub and utilize, or type in AIR legend to search for the AI track project. Once you find the AI track project, it'll show you a page like this. You can type it into Google, it'll bring it right up. Uh, you know you're in the right spot if you're looking at the README. So scroll down to the README and look at the installing and running list and do as it says. So take and download the C++ uh, distribu distributable. You might already have it on your machine. Don't be worried if you do because a lot of systems use it. Next up, go to OpenTrack's release pages. Go to OpenTrack, click on the 2023.3 version. The reason why I say that is because this 2024 version is listed as known buggy. And I have been running 2023 version and it's been working well for me. So we'll click on this and you'll see the EXE, click on the EXE, get it on your machine, go back to where we're at here, go back to the release pages in AIR legend with AI track, go to the alpha and download the zip to your local machine. Now, one buyer beware is, and it's something I've just been dealing with, with 553 takes of this video, um, is that you can only use one video at a time. You cannot use two videos. So I have not found a way so I could use my AI track along with OBS webcam. So if you're a streamer and you wanna use head tracking, you're gonna to need to find another solution. Uh, but it looks like this software is compatible with a lot of different webcams. So give something a try. If you find another way to dual broadcast, let me know, drop a comment down below. Definitely appreciate it, help the community out. So with all that being said, I am going to disappear and we're gonna start up both of those items. And I'm gonna take you through what it looks like to do the setup and what results we get. 
All right, y'all, so we got both of them open here and we're going to hit start tracking. All right, there we go. Hi, I have pink eyes. Um, okay, so you can see it is rendering the facial profile here. Next up that we're going to do is we're going to go right over to open track and hit the input, I'm sorry, change the input to UDP over network, change the output to free track 2.0. I did not have to change this, this was default. If you have issues, it does state in the readme how to change it, um, but there's a few things that you can look up there. Now, next up, we're going to go to options. And I wanna show you guys this before we get into iRacing. I only have my yaw enabled. What does that mean? That means my left and right view. When I'm driving, I'm looking at the right side of the screen or the left side of the screen. I'm gonna go back to the camera and show you guys what it's like to view this from externally because you just don't get that sense of immersion using the ultra wide and OBS, all those things. But anyways, set everything to disabled obviously do what you prefer. There's no right or wrong way to do this, but I like to use the only the X, X axis here. So from there, we have the y'all is the only thing that is enabled and the mapping. What I found here is less is more. So less is more. What does that mean? That means that I have my value here of 36.5 by nine and 75 by 28. Why do I have it set like that? Because I don't want my little head movements to be excessive here. I found that by doing this and tweaking these items is that I don't like if you're driving, you look all the way to the right. Yeah, that's great. That's what you should be doing. I hope you're doing that. Um, but my monitor isn't there. I don't have my monitor all the way over here. My monitor ends right here. So if I'm looking at the apex of a turn, I only want my head tracking to essentially go to the furthest right side or the furthest left side. So what I found, the, the settings that I liked the most was 36.5 by nine and 35 by 28. Your results may vary. So we got this going, we're tracking. Now we're really tracking. And you can see just ever so little, the octopus is moving. If I had everything else cranked up to the default values, you'd see this thing going all over the place, up, down, left, right. I don't want that. I just want left and right. I just want to look up and line up my apexes and my turns. So let's go into iRacing. Let's actually get the external view over here and see what it looks like with all this set up and running. All right, so we got open track running. One of the things I forgot to cover was to go into your options under graphics and make sure the VR mode is set to SPS. From there, you're good to go, let it rip. So we're gonna go in and see a replay. I've got my rig running on my triples, but as you can see here, going through the turn one, you're looking through it. This is important. This makes it feel so much more immersive. Like it can get distracting if you're looking at a camera and not driving, but if you're focused here, think about it. You want to line up the side of that curb right there. Just look at it. Where you look is where you're gonna go. Now, the two settings that I went over with AI track was um, around essentially the level of sensitivity. So little movements left and right aren't gonna affect it too much. But I do wanna look like through this right turn, you wanna line it up, line it up, line it up. This is where I'm looking, this is where I'm looking. Okay, we're good, we're good. You want to be able to see where you go. If you don't, if you feel like this is too much movement for you, all you gotta do is decrease the axis and it's gonna decrease the sensitivity on this. But looking through the left, right there, and just the subtle movement though, but it makes it so much more real. You're able to line up your turns, line up your apex, you're able to look right. So once again, as we were talking, if you wanna look right and look out your mirrors or look out your left window, you got that now. So I hope that this was insightful for you guys. I hope that it was useful, helpful. I hope you enjoyed it and most importantly, I hope to see you guys on the grid. Peace.